This is classified information. We're looking at real production. Welcome back to Abadji Robotic Welding. Today, we're going to take you to a production site to show you robots that are currently at work. With CCTV, Abadji can monitor what's going on at the production site so the support team is ready 24 seven anywhere in the world to solve any problems that come up. The client gives full approval for the CCTV to be used and a special case study today allows us to show you what's really going on. The company is a bridge fabricator. Generally speaking, most bridge structures in the world are welded manually. Transitioning towards implementing robots, the primary difficulty is that almost every single bridge part appears custom from a robot's point of view. First, like most metalwork, bridge structures are pre-assembled by hand, which always results in small deviations. After all, people can't weld with extreme accuracy by eye alone. And besides, bridge structures are usually huge and can get deformed during welding. Here is one of my favorite photos. You can see how curved the bridge beam is. It's about four inches off. Therefore, traditionally, many manufacturers held the belief that robots simply weren't applicable to their production. But to think so is a big mistake. Now that robots are smart and adaptive thanks to machine, vision, and algorithms, they no longer need to be programmed. Therefore, it's possible to implement robots for custom projects and even one-of-a-kind parts. We're going to have a look at the production side here. Let's take a look inside a factory of one of our customers. Before Abadji, there was only one robot and it was possible to weld only one type of part, the simplest of parts, due to programming difficulties. The company then decided to install a new robotic cell with Abadji software. Here are two robots on tracks. The customer preference is KUKA for the robots and Fronius for the power sources. The unique part is that Abadji installed machine vision. Here are the sensors. And this is the computer where the cell operator works. The working area is 10 feet by 60 feet. They don't mind such a large footprint. They have quite enough space in their factory. Here, they can place a long beam or several small parts at once. Two robots can weld one part simultaneously, or they can weld different parts at the same time. Looking here, we see nine different types of parts in action. But in general, they weld about 50 different parts a month in this one cell. Let's see how it works. Here, a part is loaded into the working area using a crane. With the traditional approach, you would have to place the part very, very accurately. And when it is such a heavy beam, it is extremely difficult to do this. In the case of a badger, the part is placed freely, without any zero points. Whatever way it's convenient to position, after all, the robots will be able to see where exactly it is. And here is a digital twin of the robotic cell. The operator uploads a 3D model of their product into the software in any CAD format. The system then automatically detects all welds. Next, you need to set the welding parameters. Here is an example of an orthotropic deck. Just out of curiosity, we measured how long it takes to create the task plan for this part. It took only six minutes for 85 seams. It is important to say that it is enough to create a task plan only once. Then the system saves the data and you no longer need to enter it again. By the way, here are some links where we talk about welding parameters. You might find them useful for further viewing. Now, 
the welding parameters are defined. Next, the robots scan the part and the work area using machine vision. This is what the results look like. This is how robots see. Green dots indicate that the part matches the previously loaded 3D model. Red dots show where the part deviates from the 3D model. This allows robots to adapt to all changes. We can see that the scan results are good. Therefore, the operator confirms them. Welding begins. Robots in this production work 24-7. Different employees operate them, and a specialized skill set is not always necessary. If there are any problems, the support team is contactable 24-7. Here are some stats they achieved. Three times cost reduction, and five times throughput increase. Additionally, they saved money on grinding, wire, and welding gas costs. Also, they secured additional savings by the system catching assembly defects before welding would commence. After that, the company decided to launch some more new cells. Here is a robotic cell with a gantry. Here is another one, also with a gantry. And note that on this cell, they recently welded a beam 75 feet long. At the present moment, they weld most of their parts with robots, despite the fact that they have high mix production. With a badgie, Robotic cells configuration can vary. One or multiple robots, one or multiple work areas, with or without external axes, tracks, gantry systems, positioners, rotators. There's a link in the description to show 40 of the most popular robotic cell configurations. I have an idea. Write in the comments what kind of parts you're interested in. We can analyze you name it and tell you what best configuration suits. We've got some good videos about an excavator bucket, an auger, and a rotor. So just add some more and we'll get it done. And uh, subscribe too, and thanks, we'll see you next time.